The U.S. government has offered financial compensation to the relatives of 10 people mistakenly killed by the American military in a drone strike on the Afghan capital, Kabul, in August. An aid worker and nine members of his family, including seven children, died in the strike. The Pentagon said it was also working to help surviving members of the family relocate to the U.S. The strike took place days before the U.S. military withdrew from Afghanistan that it came amid a frenzied evacuation effort following the Taliban's sudden return to power and only days after a devastating attack close to Kabul's airport by ISK, a local branch of the Islamic State Group. U.S. intelligence had tracked the aid worker's car for eight hours on August 29. Believing it was linked to ISK militants, U.S. Central Command's Gen. Kenneth McKenzie said last month. The investigation found the man's car had been seen at a compound associated with ISK, and its movements aligned with other intelligence about the terror group's plans for an attack on Kabul airport. At one point, a surveillance drone saw men loading what appeared to be explosives into the boot of the car, but these turned out to be containers of water. Jen McKenzie described the strike as a tragic mistake and added that the Taliban had not been involved in the intelligence that led to the strike. The strike happened as the aid worker, named as Zamari Ahmadi, pulled into the driveway of his home, three kilometers from the airport. The explosion set off a secondary blast, which U.S. officials initially said was proof that the car was indeed carrying explosives. However, an investigation found it was most likely caused by a propane tank in the driveway. One of those killed, Ahmad Mazur, had been a translator with U.S. forces. Other victims had previously worked for international organizations and held visas allowing them entry to the U.S. The compensation offer was made on Thursday in a meeting between Colin Call, the Under Secretary of Defense for Policy, and Stephen Kwan, the founder and president of an aid group active in Afghanistan called Nutrition and Education International, the Pentagon said in a statement. Mr. Khal noted Mr. Ahmadi and others who were killed were innocent victims who bore no blame and were not affiliated with ISIS-K or threats to U.S. forces, said a statement attributed to Defense Department spokesman John Kirby. He reiterated Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin's commitment to the families, including condolence payments. Mr. Austin has apologized for the attack, but Mr. Ahmadi's 22-year-old nephew Farshad Haidari said that was not enough. They must come here and apologize to us face to face he told the AFP news agency in Kabul. When the U.S. started to withdraw its troops from Afghanistan, the Taliban managed to seize control of the country within about two weeks in a rapid offensive. Kabul fell on August 15. It sparked a mass evacuation effort from the U.S. and its allies, as thousands of people tried to flee. Many were foreign nationals or Afghans who had worked for foreign governments. The security situation was further heightened after the ISK attack on the airport. A suicide bomber killed up to 170 civilians and 13 U.S. troops outside the airport on August 26. Many of those killed had been hoping to board evacuation flights leaving the city. The last U.S. soldier left Afghanistan on August 31. The deadline President Joe Biden had set for the U.S. withdrawal. More than 124,000 foreigners and Afghans were flown out of the country beforehand. But some people were unable to get out in time, and evacuation efforts are ongoing. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.